So it's time now to uh, give you the terminology and um, and introduce again these words eigen whatever. Okay, so given a square matrix A uh, and a real number lambda and a vector x for which a x equal to lambda. So let's assume that we have actually solved the problem. We found real numbers and vectors for which that is true. All right. In this situation, we're going to say that lambda is an eigenvalue for a. It's a special value, as we're going to see um, in uh, very soon. Um, not every number allows the solution of the the problem. So not for every number lambda you're going to find vectors for which that equation is true. So these special values, these characteristic values of the matrix, are called the eigenvalues for of the matrix, and correspondingly x is going to be an eigenvector for the matrix. It's going to be an eigenvector associated to that particular eigenvalue. So as you can tell, again, these are values and vectors which are strictly linked to the matrix. They identify and emphasize some special property of the matrix uh, and what property we're going to see uh, more and more of these properties as we move along. Now, uh, once again, keep in mind that x equals 0, the 0 vector is always an eigenvector, as I said earlier, and it's called the trivial eigenvector of any matrix, but again, remember the point is looking for non-trivial ones. So how we're going to look for non-trivial eigenvectors? Uh, well, first of all, we have to figure out how we're going to look for eigenvalues. Because if we can find that, then for each eigenvalue, then we can ask the question, uh, how do we find the eigenvectors? So let's start from the eigenvalues. Let, rem let me remind you again on what that means. Okay? What we're looking for is we're looking for numbers lambda for which the, the equation ax equal lambda x has non-trivial solutions. Uh, hmm, okay, that's a matrix equation, but I can rearrange that to make it look like something a little bit more familiar. So if I start from ax equal lambda x, first of all, I can rewrite that equation simply by multiplying the x on the right hand side by the identity matrix. Okay? So at this point, now I have on the left hand side and on the right hand side the product of a matrix times the same vector. So what I can do is again a little bit of basic algebra, move the right hand side to the left, then use the distributive property of matrix uh, multiplication and write that left hand side in this way. Now at this point, what do we have? We have an equation which looks like a matrix times a vector, an unknown vector, is equal to zero. Well, this is a homogeneous linear system. And we know when a homogeneous linear system, by the way, n equations, n variables, when such a system has non-trivial solutions. Right? Remember that non-trivial solutions exist if and only if. By the way, you may have seen that word and you may have thought in the past that I was misspelling it. No, I'm not misspelling it. Uh, IFF in mathematics means if and only if. So uh, it's a necessary and sufficient sufficient condition. It's an equivalent condition. So non-trivial solutions for this system exist if and only if the, there are free variables, which means that since the matrix is square, if and only if the determinant of the coefficient matrix is zero. All right. So what that means is that what I need to do is I need to find out what that determinant of that matrix is. Well, let's think about it. That's the determinant of the original matrix A minus lambda I, which is just a matrix which has lambdas all along the main diagonal, right? The identity has ones along the main diagonal. Everywhere else is zero. Multiply by lambda, that's what you get. So when we subtract it, what we end up with is basically the same as the original matrix that we started with, but along the diagonal, we're subtracting lambda from each element. Right? So this is what we're getting on the left hand side. We have to set that equal to zero and solve the equation. Right? Now notice that this matrix that we have come or this determinant we have come up with involves a whole bunch of numbers, given numbers, a11, a12, aij in general, uh, and lambda which we're looking for. So it's a variable. So let's analyze what we're actually dealing with. So what we're dealing with is that in order to find all eigenvalues, what we need to do is we need to solve that equation. And um, again, that equation is an equation in lambda. I'm going to tell you in a second what kind of equation, uh, where every, every other um, 
thing involved is just numbers. Okay, so it's going to be a relatively simple equation. Now, we need to give a name to this equation. We'll have to. It's a linear algebra. We have to give a name to everything. So this is called the characteristic equation. We could have called it the Eigen equation. That would be quite fine. And I'm sure there are some people who call it Eigen equation. But the more common uh, name is the characteristic equation. Also, notice that how do we compute a determinant? Well, when all is said and done, we're just adding and multiplying things. So we're adding and multiplying all the uh, elements of the matrix. And that matrix, remember, had a whole bunch of numbers plus that lambda. So when we add and multiply those, uh, uh, those elements, what do we come up with? Well, we come up with the polynomial on the left-hand side, the polynomial in lambda. And not surprisingly, it's going to be called the characteristic polynomial. We could call it the Eigen polynomial, but it's not normally done. So normally we call it the characteristic polynomial. But remember, Eigen really means not quite the same thing. Again, in German, it has a slightly different uh, feel to it. Uh, but it's something close to characteristic. Also, uh, the characteristic equation is a polynomial equation because the left-hand side is a polynomial. It's just a sum and product of things involving lambda. And because we have n of them and because of the way the determinant is constructed, um, what we end up with always is a polynomial of degree n. So we're going to end up with an equation of degree n. So depending on how complicated this one, this equation is, uh, we may or may not be able to solve it. We may or may not be able to solve it easily. If we have a 2 by 2 matrix, of course, we end up with a quadratic equation. And that's easy to do. If we end up with a 3 by 3 matrix, that gives us a cubic equation. And it's also possible theoretically, and, uh, but you know, as long as things turn out to be quite uh, nice. Uh, but again, it, it is solvable. And it is the way to solve to find the eigenvalues. Now, there is an equivalent form of this characteristic equation that some people use. And what they do is they basically switch the two matrices inside. This has the effect of simply changing the sign of the determinant. But of course, if it's 0 to begin with, it's going to be 0 even after you have switched the two around. And so these two equations are exactly equivalent. Now, uh, why do people use, it, use this kind of approach? Um, uh, and many textbooks uh, use this kind of approach. Well, because in this way, what you end up with is always a polynomial where the highest power of lambda has a coefficient of 1, non as, uh, uh, not of negative 1. Okay? The form that I've given to you at the beginning may end up with a polynomial that starts with a negative. Okay? And sometimes uh, uh, mathematicians don't like that. So it's a question of elegance. However, from an efficiency point of view, from the point of view of computing the eigenvalues and then after that the eigenvectors, uh, I find that it's a lot easier for students to use the equation that I gave you originally. Just write it down as a minus lambda r. Remember what that means is that all you had to do is start from your equation and simply subtract lambda for the, from the diagonal elements. If you write as lambda i minus a, what you have to do is sub change the sign of all the elements of a and then put a lambda in front of the elements of the diagonal. It's a bit more uh, convoluted to make it more negatives and so on. But it's up to you. If you, want to, if you prefer this equivalent form, go ahead. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it. All right, so this basically tells us how to find eigenvalues, gives us a complete strategy for finding eigenvalues. How about eigenvectors?